Namaste beloveds, I'm Alana Fairchild. Today I wanted to speak to you about a topic that came up in a recent podcast which is how to deal with spiritual exhaustion. <laughs> and as soon as that question was asked of me I felt that so many people could relate to it and so I wanted to create a separate blog to talk to you about that. Spiritual exhaustion probably sounds like a bit of a paradox but Spiritual energy and doing personal healing work is a little bit like running electricity through your system at a higher rate than usual. You are doing deep work, repatterning the nervous system, clearing out the mind and the heart is not just a symbolic or subtle activity. It's actually quite a visceral experience eventually where that inner work at that more etheric level actually becomes part of your physiology so these things are not separate it's just that sometimes it's easier to forget that the subtle activities of self-healing or working with energy actually have physical impact the more sensitive that you become to energy the more you realize this but even then we can sometimes forget that our spirit kind of like technology when it's working <laughs> is always on it's eternal, it doesn't move in cycles, it just is. It exists in this perennial state of luminous divinity, that's what the spirit is. And yet part of our dance, if you like, of being human is that we need to integrate the spirit with the flesh of the body and through this process we grow our soul. It's very beautiful but there's an art to it as well as a bit of a science really and the art is striking the balance and remembering that the body that births the soul through the connection of spirit is really important and it has its own wisdom and intelligence and we might call this the feminine wisdom if you like. When I speak about feminine sacredness or feminine intelligence, I'm not talking about biological or gender-based intelligence necessarily. I'm talking about the wisdom of manifest creation. So that applies to every heart, all hearts, all humans. And so when we are connecting with the wisdom of the body, the wisdom of the feminine, what we're really learning about is cycles. And spiritual exhaustion tends to happen when we get a little bit out of balance with our cycles. We're maybe trying to apply ourselves over too many things at once and forgetting this innate principle that the divine feminine tries to teach us year after year, which is we need winter. Winter is a time of contraction. It's a time sometimes of solitude or stepping back going within nurturing and not requiring of ourselves the same activity that we would see happening in mother nature in the spring and through the summer it doesn't mean that we can't do things in winter what it means is that at a soul level we need to listen for when we're going through our own personal spiritual winter of sorts and it may last a short time or a long time it may vary we may have just an hour one day where we feel like we need to reconnect and go within and find that beautiful restorative quality that winter can give to us if we're willing to listen to it. If we don't, we kind of end up in that situation where you kind of wished you had have taken a holiday during the year because all of a sudden everything is catching up to you and it's a fast path to exhaustion. We've probably all been there in some context throughout our lives. So spiritual exhaustion, as odd as the term is actually means that we're sort of pushing too hard maybe we've turned our spiritual path into a to-do list rather than a way of being it's really important that we remember that the spiritual path is not just this linear destination where we have to check things off and get things accomplished and, and keep going it's actually a way to be able to settle have that inner support and have that comfort and reassurance that our process is perfect even when it's messy even when it may seem to be going on longer than what we thought it would and in that sense the journey as the expression goes is just as important as the destination 
One of the tricks that I would say is really helpful when you're beginning to feel like spiritual exhaustion is creeping up on you and you'll know that'll happen because you'll feel fatigued and the thought of even more spiritual work will just be, oh, too much. <laughs> you have this sense that you've done so much already and any more will just feel like it's asking a bit much of you. If you're having that, then spiritual exhaustion is floating around in the ethers of your consciousness. And it can be really great to find a way to become incredibly present, to take simple pleasure in the sensuality of being alive. That might be savouring a cup of tea, it might be having a beautiful walk in nature, it's something I really love to do that just brings me simple happiness and gratitude. It might be just watching a silly movie or reading a book that has nothing to do with expanding your consciousness or requiring that you do deep reflection, but just maybe is a really great story that you can become immersed in. But it's giving yourself permission to simply be and just live your life in that moment. And this is the counterbalance that allows us to enjoy the the thrill of the deep work when it happens and the healing release and that sense that we're making progress, which is wonderful and part of life. It's sort of like the, the high summer of the soul seasons when those things happen. And they can happen more readily when we allow for the soul winter, that spiritual winter that asks us to go within and just allow things to settle and cook. It's a little bit like if you're making a souffle and you keep the oven door closed because if you keep opening it, it disrupts the process and the whole thing can just kind of go. Pfft. So if you feel like your own energy is just gone, pfft, you actually need to have some time to cook and just allow yourself to be closed away. And I think during this time on the planet when there's so much potential for distraction and also for wonderful things, new courses, new opportunities, new ways of connecting with people, it can be beautiful to remember that whilst that is a gift, potentially, there's also a tremendous amount of wisdom in allowing for yourself to step back and realize that it doesn't matter how many beautiful tools you have in your spiritual toolkit. If you don't give them time to work, it's wasting all of that energy that you've invested in learning and memorizing perhaps and practicing. So giving yourself a sense of pace and a sense of rhythm allows all the richness of the wonderful work that you're doing to really yield dividends. And the final thing I would say, which probably applies to all types of exhaustion, not just of the spiritual variety, is that sometimes more is just more, not better. So <laughs> a little bit of applying a tool and allowing yourself to really understand it can be so much more nourishing and so much more confidence enhancing when we're on our path. I hope this has been helpful. So much love from my heart to yours. Pace yourselves. Remember how amazing you are and you're doing really, really well. <laughs> Take care, beloveds. Namaste.